sound too loud. I told you, I come all the way from New York. When I stand in front of First Ghana, Queens in New York City, they are the loudest church. But I need to let them know that the people in Ohio are just as loud as them. So I need this side and I need this side as well. All right. So can we get this house rocking? Let's, let's try this one more time. Let me come inside and make sure I can hear each and every one of you. All right. God is good. And all the time. God is excellent. Our theme is what? The struggle is what? Yeah. 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 The struggle is real. This evening, I want to welcome each and every one of you to another night of our youth revival. Ever since we started last Saturday, I have called this the greatest. Everybody hear this clearly. Make sure you catch this on camera. The greatest youth revival that has ever happened in Columbus. And let me boast why this has been the greatest youth revival. Can I boast real quick? This is the youth revival where we have had the most young people participate in this youth revival. So all the young people who have participated, whether the community events team, the social team, the social media team, wherever you are, I want you to stand up so everybody can see the hard work that you all put in. So everybody stand up, stand up, don't be shy. Wherever you are, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Let's give them a round of applause round of applause but everybody I got a word that I'm bringing in tonight so everybody I need you all to listen up I got a word that I'm bringing in tonight because tonight is the final night of our youth revival and then tomorrow we're going to crown it we are definitely going to crown it tomorrow I started last Saturday my sermon title was called the real MVP. I told you all, the real MVP is Jesus Christ. You see, I came to this revival not teaching about the law. I came to this revival not teaching about conservatism or legalistic ways, but I came teaching about how each and every one of you can have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ because that is what matters at the end of the day. So today, I want to talk to us about what it means to not make an excuse because on Tuesday we started a brand new thing. I talked about baptism. We talked about the need of showing the outward manifestation towards Jesus Christ. The next night I talked about what it means to be a new you. Once you become baptized, what are the fruits of the Spirit? And then after that we talked about how to maintain your walk in Jesus Christ. But tonight I told you all I got a word. And the word this evening as I come to the screen, it says this, what's your excuse. What's your excuse? You see, a lot of times when we are called by Jesus Christ, there's still a lot of excuses we are going to give. The evening, the final evening of our youth revival, some of you all still have excuses you're going to give before you give your life to Jesus Christ. Some of the visitors who have also been in here have probably heard about Jesus Christ, but you all have still made excuses as to why you're not giving your life to Jesus Christ. So this evening, Scripture is going to shine the light. And as we always do, make sure you use the hashtag, the struggle is lit. Anything that comes to your mind, just make sure you use the hashtag, the struggle is lit. And let me just read some of those that I've seen on online. One of them said from yesterday, and I love this one, a journey with Christ gets you to a destination, everybody hear this, where your walk on this earth will never get you to. And then uh, Ray Akia said this as well, consistency is the prime factor in maintaining your relationship with Christ. So keep on tweeting because tonight, like I said, I got a word. So everybody, let's get started. So my message this evening is called, what's your what? What's your excuse? Everybody say it with me. What's your, what's your, what's your, what's your excuse? We're going to make sure this evening is fired up, all right? Because this evening, I love the word that we're going to have. So this evening, I'm going to use Exodus 3 and 4 to shed light on what it means to not 
have an excuse. Everybody, let's look at what happens here. We see that in Exodus 3 and 4, God calls Moses to a crisis. God calls Moses to a crisis. Everybody understand how God calls Moses to this crisis. Everybody watch the text and don't miss what's happening in the text. So Exodus 3, verse 2 and 3, we're going to start it from here. It says, then The angel of the Lord appeared in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that the bush was on fire. Everybody is. Moses saw that the bush was on fire and did not burn up. So verse 3 says, So Moses thought, I will go over and see the strange sight why this bush does not burn up. So this is how God called Moses. Everybody watch how God called Moses. The text says that God, Moses, saw a burning bush. And when Moses saw this burning bush, there was something interesting about this burning bush. The burning bush would not seem to give up. Everybody watch this. The burning bush, though it seemed to never give up, Moses saw it was a strange sight because why would this bush not give up? Everybody that follow this. Then Exodus 3 verse 7, we're going to jump a little bit to 3 to 7. It says this. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people. I've seen the misery of you young people. I've seen the misery of the church. I've heard them crying out because of their slave drivers, and I'm concerned about their suffering. So I've come down to rescue them from the hand of the Egyptians. So let me try and explain what's going here. You see, what happens here is that Moses goes to a burning bush that doesn't seem to give up. And then everybody watch this. In verse 7, it says that, God has seen the misery of his people. He has seen that they have been in slavery for a long time. So God says that I have seen them crying. So Moses, I am calling you to this crisis. But can I alert you to something this evening? You see, when God saw the misery, when God saw that his people were suffering, he saw that the young people were suffering in the church. This is what God did. God decided to call Moses. But everybody understand what's going on here. When God decides to call Moses, let's look at Moses' public profile. Can we look at Moses' public profile real quick? It says this, Moses was a child of miracle and destiny. This is who Moses was. Some of you young people may be called a child of miracle and destiny. Your parent probably had a hard time trying to get you into this world. But we see that Moses was a person who was a child of miracle and destiny. And then we see that Moses had another nickname. Moses was called the prince in the alien world. And then the third thing we see is that he was the common shepherd of another folk. Everybody understand what's going on. Let, let me bring it back together. Let me bring it back together. God had seen his people suffer. Everybody watch this. It's amazing. God has seen his people suffering. He has seen you young people suffering. He has seen the lives that you all have gone through, the tough times you all have gone through. But this is something interesting about God. God sees that his people are suffering, so he wants to do something about it. Now understand that before even Moses had this conversation with God, I said that Moses went to a bush, and when he saw the bush burning, the only reason that Moses was attracted to this bush was because this bush refused to give up burning. Can I get to my first point this evening? My first point this evening is this. God refuses to give up on you. God refuses to give up on you because Moses only went to the burning bush because the bush refused to give up. And it makes the context here that God refuses to give up on you. No matter what kind of misery you're going through, no matter what kind of tears you're going through, God refuses to give up on you. Can I illustrate that real quick? You see, there was something called on YouTube where they had this thing, but I'm a rapper, but I'm a rapper. Everybody check this out. When you are in a rap battle, When you are battling somebody in a rap battle, you always need to have a comeback. If somebody comes at you hard, you need to have a comeback. Your comeback needs to be strong. And I want you to understand this. When God called Moses, Moses felt like he couldn't do it. He felt like he couldn't live up to the challenge. Do I have some people in here, they feel like God is calling you, but you can't live up to the challenge. You can't live up to the expectations. Moses felt like God... 
I see that my people are going through a tough time. I see that there's tears in their eyes. But God, I am not the one. And can I explain why Moses said, I am not the one? Moses, I showed you your public profile. But the reason why Moses felt like he was not the one is this right here. Moses felt like he was a murderer and a fugitive. And all these things are true about Moses. Some of you, God is calling you, but you feel like your past does not make you qualified for God. Some of you feel that if God is calling you, you're still going to make an excuse. But I have a word for you all this evening. God refuses to give up on you. God refuses. He refuses to give. You can say whatever you want to God. Moses was trying to say, God, I see what they're going through. I see their misery. I see their tears. But God, I am not the one. This evening, God and Moses had an exchange. Moses was given a lot of excuses to the call. This evening, I want to shed light on the excuses Moses gave and how you all give them same kind of excuses. So everybody, look at the five excuses Moses gave because some of us this evening are not going to want to be baptized because of these same kind of excuses. Can we read the text? The text says this. Exodus 3, verse 9 to 11. And now the cry of the Israelites has reached me. And I've seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, I am sending you. He's talking about Moses. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses, here Moses' first excuse, and we all kind of give this excuse. Moses said to God, who am I? He said, God, who am I? Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt. Everybody, this is Moses' first excuse, right? God is calling Moses. God is calling each and every one of you. But some of you will say this this evening. Some of you will say, God, who am I? Can I get to the first excuse this evening? Our first excuse in not heeding to the call of God is this right here. I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. Can, can, can I illustrate that? You see, in this world, there's two kinds of black people. These, these two black people are not the same kind of black people. Can, can I illustrate it here? You see, what happens here is that there's a difference, though these two people are black, there's a difference between an African-American and an African, right? You both are black, but there's a difference between these two. And these are the differences right here. Some of the differences are some... Africans may have or are usually known for having a darker skin tone than African Americans. African Americans usually have a different kind of accent than Africans. When you go into school, people will see that you both are black, but they'll see a distinction between each and both of you all. This evening, what I'm trying to say is this. Sometimes we feel that our skin color our complexity, our complexion holds us back in saying that we are not good enough. Sometimes we feel that the way people are treating us because of who we are, we are not good enough. But I got a word for you all this evening because when Moses said, Lord, who am I that I should send you? This was God's response. And I'm getting to point number one. He said, and God said, I will be with you and this will be the sign to you that is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. The first thing that validates your call as to why you should be committed to Jesus Christ is you can be disqualified by the world, but qualified by Christ. You see, what happens here is this. This world will find ways to disqualify you. Right? People will use your Africanness to try and disqualify you. People will try to use your youth to try to disqualify you. People will try to use your lack of experience to try to disqualify you. But I got a word for you all this evening. Though the world will have its own kind of qualification, though they will try to disqualify you, I'm so glad that the word that God gave to Moses, despite his excuse, uh, you can be disqualified by the world, but this evening you can can be qualified by Christ. You see, a lot of times we feel like we're not called by God for this simple reason right here. But I want to let you know, you 
have been validated and called into God's ministry. Not based on the world's qualifications, not based on what qualifies us on this planet, but based on what qualifies us by Jesus Christ. But Moses still had an excuse, and some of you still have an excuse. Some of you still have another excuse. Can I get to the next excuse? Because this evening, what's your excuse? Oh, Moses said, look, Lord, who am I? Who am I? God responded, said, you can be disqualified by the world, but you are qualified by me. This evening, what's your excuse? Can I get to Moses' next excuse? Moses said this, Exodus 3, verse 13. Moses said to God, God... Moses had a lot of comebacks with God, right? He was like battling with God. So some of you also are battling with God right now. You're wrestling with a decision. So can I tell you what else Moses said to God? I love this right here. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is your name? Then what should I tell them? This is what Moses is trying to say right here. Moses excuses this. I don't have all the answers. Some of us feel the same way. You are wrestling and making a decision with Christ, though Christ is calling you because you feel like you don't have all the answers in your life right now. Moses made this same excuse that some of you are making in your hearts. I don't have all all the answers. But can I get to what this says right here? You see, I want to illustrate this. You see, my boys are in the back, right? My brother and my boys, we grew up to it together. And I'll tell you this. When we decided to get baptized, leading up to the crusade, we was in Brooklyn at this time, and there was a crusade going on. Now, I want you to understand this, because I said the excuse that Moses gave was, I don't have all the answers. I'm going to illustrate that to you all. You see, what happens here is that we were doing a crusade. Now, crusade, they always usually want you to go and pass out flyers to let people know that this, gr- this crusade is going down. So everybody understand what's going on. So my boys and I, we about 14, 15 around this time. So we decided to go and pass our flyers. Now, we young, we excited, we just want to go out there and distribute the word of God. So what happens is that when we went out to give out these flyers about the crusade, We stumbled upon our greatest match. We stumbled what we call Jehovah Witnesses. Now, if you know anything about Jehovah Witnesses, Jehovah Witnesses are persistent. They can even be annoying at times. At times, they will try to embarrass you and challenge you, and they will never give up on you. Can I have a witness this evening that you have met a Jehovah Witness, and they're going to stay persistent on you? They will come to your house. Even if you don't speak English, they will come back again and bring somebody who speaks tree. Can I get a witness this evening that that happens? The same thing happened here this evening. When we went out into the field, we met these Jehovah Witnesses. Now, we were young, so we felt like, look, we've been attending church kind of, so I feel like we could answer the challenges. So the Jehovah Witnesses decides to ask us questions about our faith and understand what happened here. We were exposed right on the spot because he asked us a question that we did not have what we call the answers too. But I want you to understand something. Though it felt like we didn't have the answers to what the Jehovah Witness was posing to us, though it felt like Moses felt and told God that I don't have all the answers, even though I'm going to be called by you, I got a word for you all this evening. This is how God responded to Moses' excuse. He said, God said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is what God is trying to say and why your call has been validated. When you're called, God's power, everybody hear this, God's power will remain the same as it was in the past as it is in the present, as it is in the future, because God is the same as yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Amen. This is my God. My God is trying to say this. You don't got the answers right now. It's cool. It's cool. Can I tell you that it's cool that you don't have the answer? Matter of fact, you should not have the answers for your Christian walk. But I want to give you a word that though you may not have the answers, my God who is so powerful will find a way to give you the answers because he's the same as yesterday, today, and tomorrow. 
So I got no worries if I don't have all the answers. Moses' excuse this evening. What is your excuse? What's your excuse? Well, Moses is battling with God. He's battling. He said, I don't got all the answers. God said, I'm the same as yesterday and tomorrow. Today, what's your excuse? If this was your excuse, what's your excuse? I just answered it. Scripture just answered it. What's your excuse? Let's get to the next one. So, Moses, he's trying to get out of the situation. You understand when somebody is really trying to get out of the situation? Moses was trying to get out of the situation. He was trying to postpone him being called into God. He was trying to postpone his decision being called into God's ministry. So Moses came back again. Let's get to the third excuse this evening. Let's get to the, can I get to the third one? The third one says this. So Moses answered, what if they do not believe me? Or what if they do not listen to me and say, the Lord did not appear to you? A.K.A., what if they see me as being fake? What will they do? Lord, I am not the right one. Can I try to tell you what his excuse was this evening? This was his excuse. People will not listen to me. Let me hit somebody's corner. Some of you are wrestling with this decision because you feel that once you become a part of this church, the church is not going to listen to you. They're not going to listen to your ideas. They're not going to listen and try to give you a way in this ministry. But I want to alert you all this evening. Though Moses felt like they would not listen to me, I'm going to illustrate that to you all. You see, I never loved public speaking. Matter of fact, me being on the stage a couple years ago would have never been a likely scene because I did not like speaking in front of people. I had a nerve in front of people. But I want you to understand this evening. Though you may have a nervous feeling about doing God's ministry or about serving God or about committing yourselves to Jesus Christ, I want you to understand how God responded to this. In Exodus 4, the Lord said to him, he said to Moses, what's in your hand? A staff, he replied. The Lord said, there, throw it on the ground. Then I want to paraphrase what it says here. 4, 2, verse 8 says, put your hand inside your cloak. So Moses put his hand inside his cloak, and he took it out, and the skin was leprous, and it became white as snow. Verse 7, now put it back in your cloak. He says, so Moses put his hand back, and when he took it out, it was restored like the rest of his flesh. Then the Lord said, if they do not believe you or pay attention to the first sign, they may believe the second. But if they do not believe these signs or listen to you, take some water from the Nile and pour it on the dry ground, a.k.a. what this text is trying to say is this when you are called by God when you're called God will make the impossible believable whoa 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 what what does that mean what does that mean some of you are so worried that when you feel that you make this decision towards Christ people are not going to listen to you and see you as a validated person. People are always going to judge you by your past. When you speak up, people will be like, he was the alcoholic, so we don't got to listen to him. He was the weed smoker, so we don't got to listen to him. But I want to understand and let you highlight you this evening. What's your excuse? Because God is saying this, I will make the impossible believable. What's your excuse? This evening, what's your excuse? Some of you are wrestling with the decision. Tomorrow, it goes down. The greatest event is going to go down tomorrow. You're going to go through immersion. Some of you are going to wrestle with this decision this evening. But I'm trying to let you all know there is no need to wrestle with your decision because any kind of excuse you may have in serving Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ always has a response to your excuse. What's your excuse? Can I get to the next point? Let's get to excuse number four. Moses said to the Lord, this is Moses' next excuse. I like this one. He said, pardon your servant, Lord. I have never been eloquent, neither in the past, nor since you have spoken to your servant. I am slow of speech and tongue, a.k.a. I'm a terrible speaker. <laughs> that's, that's what Moses is trying to say. 
He's, I'm, I'm simplifying it for you all. I'm a terrible speaker. He says, Lord, I can't speak. If I'm going to go out there and try and serve you, I can't speak. I can't move a crowd. I can't talk to people about Christ. You see, the, the whole thing here is this. Some of you feel that you shouldn't make a decision because you feel that when you go out there into the world, you will still have a nervous feeling about talking to others about Christ. What happens is that some of you are going to feel ashamed. So you all don't want to make that decision this evening or tomorrow because you feel that God will not give you the words to proclaim his life. But I got a word for you all. I'm going to use my own testimony. You see, what happens here is that God will always give you the way of words when it comes down to it. God will never leave you in a situation where you're so stuck. God will never leave you in a situation where he can't make a way out of no way. What will happen here is that when you are called by God, this is what the Lord said to Moses, and the Lord is saying this to each and every one of you this evening. Who gave human beings? their mouths. Everybody understand this. Who makes them deaf or mute? Who gives them sight or makes them blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, I will speak and teach you what to say. Y'all got excuses. Tonight, y'all st- I'm going to make an appeal. Y'all still got an excuse. But I'm trying to alert you all this evening. Whatever kind of excuse you are going to make, God always has a response to your excuse. Because what I see here is this. This is how God answers Moses' excuse. He said, I'm a slow in tongue. I cannot speak. I cannot have the words. When I go out there, I won't know how to evangelize or minister in your name after I get baptized. But what Moses is trying to say and what God is trying to tell Moses this evening and how your call can be validated when you're called, God's voice becomes your instrument. When you're called by God, he's going to give you the way around the English language. If you're a tree speaker, he's going to give you around, around the way to tree. Understand that in order for you to make this commitment today, there's a Jesus Christ who will become your voice in a time of trouble. Your voice in a time of pain. Your voice when the valley's too low in your life, when the mountain is too high to climb. This evening, what's your excuse? That's my question. Today, the adults in here as well. Some of you are just like these young people. Some of you are living what we call a second childhood. You are a grown adult, but still a baby. Because what happens here is that you are still wrestling with these same kind of excuses. Though you've already gone down into the water, this excuse is still there in your life. This evening, my young people, some of you are wrestling. Some of you are afraid of what's going to happen once you become committed into Jesus Christ. But just as how God responded to Moses, when you're called, God becomes your voice. The pastor won't become your voice. The elders annoying won't become your voice. Who will become your voice? It's Jesus Christ. What's Moses' last excuse? Can I get to Moses' last excuse? Moses had a bunch of excuses. But this is the fifth one. And this ends it forever. And I hope this ends your excuse forever. This is it. Moses said, pardon me, Lord, please send someone else. <laughs> God, you see, you see what happened here is this. I, I, I love this right here. Moses had come up with every kind of excuse possible, and he didn't think God could answer all of his excuses. You see what happened? Some of you are playing with God. Y'all trying to give God every kind of excuse, but I have to let you know that God can respond to any kind of excuse that you may have. So Moses gives up. (laughs) Moses gives up. This evening, some of you all are going to give up as well. Moses says, Lord, send someone else. Moses got nothing else because God keeps giving him fire, fire, fire. He's going ham on him. 
Lord, send someone else. AKA, this is what Moses is trying to say. You have, everybody repeat after me. You have what? You have what? You have the wrong person. Some of you this evening make this same excuse. Now, I can't ba- get baptized. Kofi, you got the wrong person right now. I-, I, can't, I can't make this commitment. You got the wrong, I still got a life to live. You got the wrong person right now. I'm, I'm hearing you preach today. I'm hearing you preach, but I'm still not the right person. It's not the right time. This is how I want to illustrate this. You see, my brother, right? I, I love my brother so much. My best friend. My brother's my best friend. I love this man so much. My brother's younger than me, and my brother's a minister. You see, I'm not a minister, but my brother is a minister. And we have always, and currently, we do ministry as a partnership. We go out to various places. We minister. Unfortunately, couldn't be here for this revival, but we minister together. Now, I want you to understand, though he was the minister, I always felt like if I was to do something, I had to refer it to him because he was the minister. I had to refer to him because he was the one who studied theology. I had to refer to him because he knows and he's the expert in such situations. But I realized this, and I want to help you all understand this evening. Though I felt like everything should be referred and deferred to my brother, the same way that Moses felt that, Lord, I am not the right person in this journey right now. I'm not the right person you should choose in your life right now. I want you to understand this clearly. God's presence walks with you when you are called. His presence is going to walk with you. You're never the wrong person, according to Jesus Christ. You are never the person who Jesus can never use. This evening, young or old, I want you to understand, if you feel that you are the wrong person for Christ's ministry, understand this real clear. God's presence will walk hand in hand with you. This evening, what's your excuse? I'm telling you that God's presence is going to walk with you. Tomorrow, once you go down into that water, God becomes your right hand. And can I tell you something about God's right hand? According to the psalmist, God's right hand is the source of victory. God's right hand is the source of his protection. When Christ ascended into his heaven, God did not sit, Christ did not sit on the left hand, but Christ sat on the right hand. This evening, God's right hand is what's going to lead you through this walk with Jesus Christ. God's presence is going to walk with you when you're called. Because can I, can I tell you what happened to Moses? See, Moses gave up. But Christ never gives up on you. Your mother's going to give up on you. Your mother's going to say, you're a stubborn child. You are no good. I'm kicking you out of the house. I don't want you here. Your mother's going to give up on you. Your father may give up on you. Your church may give up on you. Your friends may give up on you. But Jesus Christ, God, my Savior, will never give up on you. Because... Can I tell you what happened to Moses? Moses was done. He said, I see that this God can answer all my excuses. So Moses said this. And God said, I will be with you, and this will be the sign to you that is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you worship God on his mountain. Moses answers the call. Because Moses saw that it was only through Jesus Christ his presence can walk with him. And this is how Moses got transformed. The great Moses that we admire today. Because Christ refused to give up on him, Moses became powerful. It says here, Moses answered the call. And because Moses was answering the call, throughout Moses' life, he was transformed in God's presence. This evening, you are going to be transformed in your walk with Christ. You are going to see a bigger transformation in your life once you are called by God. The second thing is this. The transformation includes a deepened understanding of God. Once you decide to commit to his call, you're going to have a deep understanding of Jesus Christ and his word. 
can I alert you out to something else? You're going to have a progressive commitment to God's view. And I love this last thing. Moses developed a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what's going to happen. After you go down into these waters tomorrow, after you decide to make that commitment again, though you've made it before, Moses, after he accepted God and stopped making excuses, all these things you see on the screen, a transformation happened in his life. Today, what's your excuse? If God can make a transformation out of a man who has so many excuses, God can do the same for you this evening. I love what Kirk Franklin says. I love Kirk Franklin. Kirk Franklin said this. You don't have to worry, and you don't have to be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Troubles, they don't last always. For there's a friend named Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, My life is in your hands. What's your excuse? What's your excuse? Stop making an excuse this evening. This week, you probably made countless of excuses. This evening, God can answer all of your excuses. As the praise team comes on up, I want to make an appeal this evening. You see, there was a man on the cross that died 2,000 years ago. He did it for you and I. He did it because he wanted us to see ourselves have victory in our sin. This evening I am calling you to look at this man, bloody and stained. To look at this man and give your life unto him. Because it is only through Jesus Christ you will have a transformation in your life. As the praise team sings, I want you all to deeply reflect in your heart. They're going to sing softly and tenderly. Jesus is calling. As you're sitting down, what's your excuse? Moses had to come back every single time. But God refused to give up on him. People will give up on you. But Jesus will never give up on you. Today I'm looking for the real Christians. Can the real Christians stand up today? I've been baptized before. But my life did not go the way it should have gone. I want to recommit. I'm calling you to the front this evening. This evening, you want to go down into the waters for the first time because you're tired of making excuses. I am also calling you to come on home. Don't look to your neighbor. Don't look to your family, to your father, to your church. But look unto Jesus. Today, I'm going to make that personal relationship with Jesus a relationship that I would love to invest in. As they sing the song, earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. I'm calling each and every one of you. Today, stop making an excuse. Because God refuses to give up on you. Wherever you are, I'm calling you to come to the front. I'm making this appeal. Even if you're afraid to come up, just raise your hand. Or squeeze the person's hand next to you. And that person will bring you up. Squeeze that person's hand next to you. And that person will bring you up here this evening. I will even come to you and bring you up here this evening. Because this evening, my appeal is simple. If you've heard what happened in Scripture, God refuses to give up on you this evening. Wherever you are, young or old, Jesus is calling unto you. Jesus is calling unto you. Jesus is calling unto you. Wherever you are, come on forward. Come on forward. Come on forward.
Let us all rise to our feet. Let us all rise to our feet. This evening, wherever you are, I'm calling you to come on home. Squeeze the person's hand next to you if you're afraid to come up. Raise your hand. I will come and get you wherever you are. Jesus is calling you. Wherever you are, I'm calling you to come on home. Come on home. God bless you, my sisters. God bless you, my sisters. I'm calling you to come on. You heard. You came here for the first time this evening. But I'm calling you to come on home. I'm calling you to come on home. As it's completely silent in here. My appeal is simple this evening. Wherever you are, visitor, but you don't want to make an excuse no more. Come and join my sisters and my brothers here. You don't want to make an excuse, but you want to give your life to Jesus. but you want to do it through baptism. You want to be baptized into Jesus' name. You want to go through the waters tomorrow. You want to make that immersion. You want to make that outward manifestation. As the praise team sings, come on home. That's my second appeal. You want to be baptized. Wherever you are, Jesus is calling. God bless you. Wherever you are, as they keep on singing, all eyes are closed. You want to make that decision to be baptized into Jesus. I'm calling you to come up to the front. is to you. You want to be baptized. You're, you're a grown adult, but you still want to be baptized. It's not just for the young people getting baptized tomorrow, but you're a grown person. You probably committed yourself to Jesus a while back, but straight off. I'm calling you to be baptized this evening. I'm calling you to be baptized this evening. As the praise team keeps singing softly and tenderly, as the audience joins in, you want to be baptized, go through the waters, go through immersion. You want to make that commitment to Jesus, I'm calling you to come up to the front. As the praise team sings and as the crowd joins in, wherever you are, squeeze your person's hand next to you. They will bring you up. Come on home. Come on home. <laughs>
because you know God refuses to give up on you. I'm calling you to come to the front for baptism. Tomorrow you're going down into the waters, going through immersion, and you want to be committed because you want to have Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You're not getting baptized to the church. You're not getting baptized to the leadership, but you're getting baptized because you want a personal relationship with Jesus. Because the only thing that can save you is a personal relationship with him. All eyes are closed, and as everyone is here this evening, I'm calling you for baptism. God bless my sisters and brothers who have come to the front here. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you so much for everything you've done for us. I want to thank my sisters and brothers who have decided to become baptized into Jesus. They want to go through immersion. They want to go through the water and commit to you. Show that outward manifestation towards you. Some people are still wrestling with that decision this evening. Some people, some grown adults are still wrestling with that decision. Too embarrassed to come up here. I pray that, Lord, as we're praying, they will come up to the front and understand that I'm not going to make an excuse no more because I'm going to commit to Jesus because he refuses to give up on me. This evening I pray for those who have made the best decision ever, the decision of having Jesus as their personal Savior. Today, may we all pray that our broken hearts be lifted unto you. Bless us all. Bless us all. We pray this in your holy name. Amen.